Hello and welcome back to another reading of Because of Mr. Corrupt. Being that it's Friday, I've decided that instead of waiting again until Monday to continue the read aloud, I'm going to post these Saturday and Sunday as well. I'm having so much fun and I hope you are as well that I want to continue this every day. So I should be posting at least one of these, if not two more of these, on Saturday and on Sunday. With that being said, the blanket that I've chosen to use for this read aloud is another quilt that was made by my mother. She, actually, this was the first quilt she ever made for me. And I don't use it very often because it's so special to me, but I felt like it was perfect for this video. I've also got Mr. Bunny back. He enjoyed our read aloud on Monday so much, he's been begging to come back. So finally, I allowed him. And the mug I've chosen today is a mug that was made by my mother-in-law, who many of you know is an artist and an author. So she's written a couple of different books and the series, the Belden Boy series, and she made these little campfire mugs with the logo of her truck on it, which is awesome because I love driving around her pickup truck. It is a 1953 Chevy pickup, and it's a fun vehicle to drive. Okay, Diego is behind us. Sleeping on the birds. I actually wrapped him in a second blanket because he said he was a little chilly. Hope he's warm now. All right, so we left off on Jessica's chapter. And we're trying to figure out if they're going to go outside for half the day on their free day. All right. The, okay, Jessica. Act 7, Scene 1. The class bubbled with energy. Mr. Terrupt had just attached the last link for our paper chain to touch the floor. The links were hard to come by with the likes of Peter and Alexi in our classroom, but we did it. Congratulations! You've earned a free day, Mr. Tripp said. A class party. Peter couldn't believe it. None of us could, really, but Peter was beside himself. The only thing he could do to wrap his brain around this was to go outside and actually be playing in the snow. Don't forget your stuff now, California girl, he said to me. I didn't need reminding. It was all I could think about. Not because I was excited. Act 7, Scene 2. I raised my hand tentatively and waited for Mr. Turup to call on me. It was nearly time to go home. I couldn't wait any longer. You have a question, Jessica? Yeah, sort of, I said. I have a problem. I don't have any snow pants. I didn't need them in California. Silence. It was like I sucked all the excitement out of the classroom with a gigantic vacuum hose. Peter glared at me. I couldn't look at him. And then I saw Luke raise his hand. Mr. Turup. Mr. Trepp called on him. Lukester, I have a pair of snow pants Jessica can borrow. They're my sister's old ones. Add a baby, Lukester, Peter yipped up. Saved. Thanks, Lukester. That's very nice of you, Mr. Trepp said, looking in my direction. I'm sure Jessica will take them. I could only nod. Yes, Peter replied. This is going to be great. I thought so, too, especially after Luke's generosity. I always thought Luke only cared about himself, but maybe I was wrong and prejudged him. Mr. Trepp sat at his desk smiling. He reminded me of the old professor in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Did he know everything? <laughs> All right, this is Luke's chapter. Oh. And if you're wondering what's in the mug, it's still coffee. Fridays are typically a busy day for me, so I drink coffee more often throughout the day than I normally do. It's a good way to get things done. All right, Luke's chapter. 27 links. That's how many it took for the chain to hit the floor. I was wrong. I had estimated 26. Mr. Trupp had us estimate the final number when we only had five. Most everybody jotted down random guesses, but I took a ruler and measured the length of what we had and the length to reach the floor. The real problem was all the links were different sizes, a variable that I couldn't control. I averaged the links that were hanging and used that to help me come up with 26. All right, gang, Mr. Trupp said. 27 links. Let's see if anyone guessed that. He had all of our guesses stuffed in an empty coffee can. I was hoping to be the closest. Maybe not got it right, but closest. He pulled out our little scraps of paper one by one. 21. 30. 30 is a dollar word. 50. Everyone laughed except me. 23. Aha, he said. There's one. 27. I lost. <laughs> I lost. I can't believe I was wrong. And the winner is Anna. 
She must have guessed. There's no way she could have figured it out. Anna walked up to Mr. Truff with her head held high. At least the winner wasn't Peter or Alexia. Congratulations, Anna, Mr. Truff said. He handed her a homework pass. She was all smiles. I didn't need one of those anyway. Yay, Anna, Jessica said. Way to go. But wait, Mr. Truff said. There seems to be one more estimate that's correct. Must be Luke's, I heard someone whisper. Drum roll, please, Mr. Truff said. That's a drum roll, by the way. And the second winner is... Peter. No way, I screamed inside of my head. Of course Peter made a major production of walking to the front of the room and taking his dramatic bow. Thank you, thank you, he said. This is a great honor to me. Mr. Trupp handed him a homework pass. Get out of here, he said. Everyone laughed except me. Peter flashed his homework pass in my face. The Elmer sneakers didn't bother me, but this did. I felt hot. My face and my ears burned. I turned lobster red. I could feel it. I'm going to get even, I thought. We talked about that. Sometimes when you get really angry, you can feel your body warming up, your face turning red. Sounds like Luke's really mad. The chain has touched the floor, Mr. Trupp announced. It's time for a free day. My colleagues, colleagues is a dollar word, my colleagues and I were in for a treat. Mr. Trupp told us that we would be going outside. Great, I thought. But what's the catch? Was he going to tell us to bring our shovels? Shovels is a dollar word. To find out how many scoops it would take to clear the parking lot? Nope, just snow pants, hats, boots, and mittens. Mittens is also a dollar word. We had the okay for Mrs. Williams to play in the snow as long as everyone had the proper snow clothes. Jessica threw us the curveball, and boy, it was a bender. She didn't have snow pants. Talk about hitting us with the unexpected. So who comes to the rescue? Me. I had to. Plus, I liked Jessica. She was serious about school, and I didn't want to miss the chance to inoculate, inoculate's a dollar word, Peter with a snowball. So it sounds like Luke's going to be throwing a snowball at Peter. I don't think that's allowed. All right. This will be our last chapter, and this will take us all the way into February. Jeffrey's chapter. Oh. It's not your fault. That's what Jessica has said to me. And that was what I kept repeating in my head. The only other person to ever tell me that it wasn't my fault was Michael. It was just before he died. I have a hard time believing it, but his words still make me feel a little better every time I think of him saying it's not your fault. I need his words and Jessica's because I know mom and dad blame me. They sure don't love me. Why else are they so silent? They don't speak to me, rarely. And they never speak to each other. Dad has started going to work again, but Mom mopes around the house. She hasn't been out of her pajamas since Michael's funeral. Christmas was tough again this year. It was our second one without Michael. Not that we celebrated either time with him. Dad got a tree this year, though. It showed up one day in our living room. I put a few decorations on it. Mom pretended it wasn't even there. And that's how they end the chapter. Sounds like Jeffrey's going through some pretty tough stuff. I wonder if he's going to get out of it. I wonder if one of his friends is going to help him. I don't know, but I worry about him. All right. So I'll see you guys again tomorrow to figure out what happens in February.